This is section 4.2, Extreme Values. And in this video, we're going to go through an example problem that's really similar to number 70 in your book. So this question asks us to prove that this function has precisely one root. Okay, so the first time you read this problem, it might make you think all the way back to section 2.8 about the intermediate value theorem. And if you remember, in that section, we had a couple questions ask us to prove that there's a root on some interval of some function. And if you remember how we did that, and what intermediate value theorem says, is that if we have some function, and it's continuous, that has to be the first point, it's continuous, and there's some value over here that's negative, some value over here that's positive, we don't know what this middle section looks like, but we do know that since it's continuous, there has to be at least one point where it crosses the x-axis. In other words, there has to be at least one root in this interval. Okay, so this question though, what makes it different, is that it's asking us to prove that it has precisely one root. So the way we start this problem is gonna be similar. We're gonna use intermediate value theorem, but then in step two, what makes it different is that we're gonna end up using the derivative. Okay, so let's go through step one first. So in step one, we're gonna prove that there is a root of this function on some interval. They don't give us any, any numbers, so we're just gonna pick our own. So let's make the math easy on us. Let's try f of zero. And when we plug in zero into this function, we get zero plus zero plus zero, zero minus 10. That'll give us some negative value. Okay, now let's try a bigger number. Try to get a positive value. So let's try if we plugged in two for x. When we plug it into this function, we end up getting positive 50. We get a positive number. Good news. That means that since this is a polynomial and it's continuous, and over here, it's a negative value, and over here, it's a positive value, we know that there's at least one root of this function. So let's write that in our first part. So we can say, by intermediate value theorem, there has to be at least one root of the function because f of zero is less than zero, it's negative, and f of two is greater than zero, it's positive, and f of x is continuous. So we know somewhere in the middle has to cross the x-axis. Therefore, there exists a number c such that f of c is equal to zero, at least one value that is equal to zero. Okay, so step one, we verify that there is a root of this function. Step two, we need to prove that this is the only root. Okay, so like we said, we're gonna end up taking the derivative of this function. So let's go ahead, take the derivative, f prime of x, using our power rule, this just becomes five x to the fourth plus six x plus two. Okay. The way we're gonna prove that this is the only root is by checking the sign of the derivative. Because we already know that it's going from some negative to some positive value, but how do we know that after this positive value, it doesn't turn around and come back down and touch the x-axis again? How do we know that it keeps on going up? Well, if we can check the sign of the derivative, the derivative will tell us whether this function is increasing or decreasing. Remember, because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, at a specific point. If the slope is always positive of that tangent line, that means that this function is always increasing. Okay, so let's just think about this. If we were to plug in a really negative value into our derivative, so some really, really big negative number, right here at 5x to the fourth, anything to an even power will be positive. So I'll have a really, really big positive number. Um, and then plus 6x, well, that would be a negative number, but it'd be a lot smaller than this really big positive number. So overall, this value will be positive. On the other hand, if we were to plug in a positive number into our derivative, well, there's no subtraction going on, so we're gonna get a positive value. So that tells us that our derivative is always positive, and therefore, our function is always increasing. So since it's always increasing, there's no way that it's ever gonna turn back down and start decreasing and touch the x-axis again. So we can say f prime of x is always positive, so f of x is always increasing, so c is the only root. And that's how you prove this problem. Step one, we had to prove that there was at least a root in this function, and step two, we proved that it was the only root by checking the sign of the derivative. Other than that, that's it. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either 
schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.